My name is Sagar Dhanrali. I'm the staff engineer at Riverbed Support. And today we are going to take a look at Steel Central Net Profiler SAML 2.0 quick configuration. So what is the need for SAML 2.0? So Net Profiler as of release 10.12 did not support cross-product login authentication or single sign-on. That is, when you log into the Net Profiler and you want it to view an IP address in AppResponse 11 or NetIM, or you have to download packets through AppResponse 11, you had to authenticate separately to AppResponse 11 or NetIM application respectively. Um, with the support for single sign-on, uh, this makes it uh, a seamless transition between one product and another. So uh, starting version 10.13 in NetProfiler, we started supporting SAML 2.0 standard, which allows integration with the identity provider or remote authentication server uh, that supports cross platform user authentication. Uh, so this is how a basic uh, SAML 2.0 uh, block diagram looks like. Uh, you have three main components over here, a user, a browser, making a request uh, to NetProfiler, which is a service provider, and uh, there is an identity provider on the far right. So when the user uh, tries to authenticate to the application or a service provider or NetProfiler in this case, a security exception is thrown, which basically redirects uh, uh, SSO URL with SAML request to the identity provider. The identity provider does verification of the user session. Uh, you can use uh, LDAP in the backend and basically redirects this SAML response to the federated server uh, that's running on to the service provider which identifies the user and the user either gets logged in or it gets rejected. Uh, this whole operation is transparent from the user perspective. Uh, NetProfiler SAML 2.0 configuration can be found under the Configuration, Account Management, Remote Authentication uh, drop-down. In this particular screen, uh, you will be configuring the various SAML uh, parameters and uh, this will become much more clearer once we go to the demo. One part of the SAML configuration is to configure the parameters to interact with the IDP and the second part is to do uh, user role mapping uh, to the NetProfiler. The role mapping is similar as of now what we do in the TACX Plus. So we do the exact same thing for SAML 2.0 authentication. Uh, one thing to note is the net profiler which will reject the request from a SAML user that did not map to a role that's defined onto the node profiler if the IDP is the one who's doing the authorization. So let's uh, take a quick demo. Here's my net profiler. I'm going to log in to that using my local credentials. Configuration, account management, remote authentication, and this is where we will configure the SAML 2.0. The first field is enable the SAML 2.0. We are going to leave that unchecked uh, and going to move on to the next field, which is the name ID attribute. The name ID attribute, I'm going to, it's an optional field. When this field is left empty, NetProfiler uses the value of the IDP name ID attribute as the username for the user attempting to log in. This is typically the user's email address, but my IDP doesn't require any kind of configuration for name ID, so I'm going to leave that blank. Most important thing is the metadata of the IDP that you can download from your IDP server. I have one downloaded, so I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. The next option is to allow local login. This option, when checked, uh, allows the administrator to log in to the net profiler through a special URL. Uh, if you do any kind of misconfiguration uh, of uh, IDP uh, metadata or uh, role mapping, you can go to that particular special URL, bypass the SAML authentication and log in using local authentication. Uh, the next uh, option, I'm going to leave that blank. It's uh, for required sign assertion. Uh, basically, as an additional level of security, you can select this checkbox to require assertion from the IDP to be signed. Uh, I'm going to leave this thing blank for now. The SP metadata, which is the service provider met metadata, can be downloaded over here. Uh, some of the IDP configuration, if they require you uh, to have a SP metadata, uh, you can download this uh, XML file and paste the XML into the IDP. Uh, my IDP server does not require to uh, download the service provider metadata, so I'm going to move to the next field, which is the fully qualified domain name of my net profiler. 
and the next two fields are populated uh, by default and this is basically an assertion uh, consumer service URL uh, if your IDP requires you to configure these URLs this is where you can find them and the uh, identity ID of the SP is basically the URL that you will be going on to authenticate the users um, lastly there is a sign authentication request uh, I'm going to leave that uh, field blank for the demo purpose but uh, if this uh, option is checked you need uh, to generate the certificate that you can do using by clicking on this hyperlink or going into the encryption uh, management page before you hit apply uh, I would highly recommend that you test this uh, uh, configuration out so let's do a quick test Please note that I haven't set any kind of role mapping, so I expect this to fail. So as you can see, unauthorized, none of the attributes is matching a role. So I know that I'm part of one of the group. Um, so I can configure that particular group as a role map. But let's go through uh, different fields for uh, that, that you see over here. So this is the authorization uh, information over here, uh, my username. Uh, is currently blurred out so you cannot see and the role that uh, to which I got mapped since we haven't defined any kind of roles that particular line is empty and these are the SAML attributes SAML attributes always written back as like a attribute value pair so this is the name of the attribute and this is the value uh, I'm going to use the name as member of for my demo purpose and the value I'm going to use it as an axillion users of which I'm a part of. So let's say, let's go ahead and do the role mapping. So I want to say I'm the member of is the attribute and the value is actually on users. What this is saying is if allow uh, the users which are member of the actually on user group uh, to be the administrator of this particular net profiler. I'm going to save this configuration and then I'm going to test uh, the authorization information now returned as authorized as administrator using the SAML attribute member of Asselion users. So this is how you configure the different role mapping. If you want a particular uh, user that belongs to a, a certain group to have just operator or a monitor role, you can configure those role mappings uh, over here. So once you have done this thing, uh, you you can go ahead and enable uh, SAML and hit apply. Um, it will give you a confirmation that the settings have successfully been applied and you can log out and log back in. And now, as you can see, it went into the SSO URL and uh, I am logged in as a SAML authenticated user. Okay, so now since we have configured SAML, uh, let's uh, take a quick look on how we can jump from one particular product to another without needing to authenticate to that product. So I'm going to go and say view in AR11. I'm going to select this particular AR11 and say application stream analysis. Now note that my app response 11 is also configured similarly to talk with the same IDP. So if SAML wasn't configured, I would get a, a username and password prompt here, but now it doesn't give me that and it logs me into AR11 and it runs the application um, analysis report. This is how you configure a SAML on Net Profiler and test out the user authentication and also do a cross product integration. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.